don't want to be purified. Oh, yes. Uh huh. We want to have church. Let me show you something, brother. Come. Can you come? Can you help me? Can you help me? I want everybody in here. I want the music to start up. I want the drums to start up. And I want you to give me some shout music. And I want everybody in here. I want you to start clapping and dancing. And I want you to begin to praise God. And come on, just start praising God. See, this is what was happening. And they said, wait a minute. He, 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 he's dead. So, somebody just died. You know what? You know what David did? He said, wait a minute, God. You want me to take your glory? To your people. But if you're going to kill people, you got to show me. When was the last time that we as preachers and teachers have stopped and asked the Lord, how do you want me to handle this ministry? Wait, wait. See, see, I understand something. We are so stuck on the people that we have hired because see in the body of Christ now everything you do you got to get a check you can't sing a song unless we pay you you won't beat the drums unless we pay you you won't lead testimony service unless we pay you and y'all don't like it and I don't care but the Holy Ghost told me to bring it down tonight you won't lead prayer service unless we pay you you know what you're not servants you're people we've hired you say you got did somebody prophesy to you in the parking lot that don't know your lifestyle who have you sat under and got broken before you picked up your bible and made yourself some cards and said you're going to preach I don't care how many doors open for you if God don't send you you coming back because you are illegal in the gospel You don't even. Y'all sit down because I got to do this. I got to do this. 
this tonight? You know who he represents? He represents the part of the church that feels like I don't have to pray. I don't have to fast. 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 Fasting for this church in this hour is like a special event. We pass our flyers and we say I yearly fast. I'm not talking about a yearly fast, baby. I'm talking about something that God does in your spirit where he can wake you up in the middle of the night and say don't eat for 10 days. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not talking about these little mamsy pamsy denials where you eat soup and you eat one meal a day. I'm talking about turning your plate down. The Bible said these kind come out. That's why they're not coming out. You can't counsel a devil. You have to cast a devil out. Pastor, can I see you? Pastor, can I have an appointment? Pastor, can I see you? Pastor's list is long. Got a whole line outside of his office full of people that want to be counseled when they need demons to be casted out. And we don't preach like that no more because you know what we've learned to do in the church? We've learned to control our demons. We've learned to master our demons. We've learned how to all oh, y'all ain't gonna talk back in here tonight. And you got people that are in the body of Christ that are practicing witchcraft. You got people that's laying hands on other people and transferring spirits on other people. God help us tonight. And some of us that don't have any discernment got the audacity to look at these people and say, oh honey, she's anointed. She's speaking tongues when she's full of demons. The Bible said that tremble and they speak in tongues talking about buses I heard God speak down in my spirit he said go get my church he said go get my people cause he said there is a people y'all don't want to believe this but all of us don't want an earring in our nose all of us don't want our hair purple and green and orange. All of us don't want our belly buttons pierced. All of us don't want to dress naked and look like strumpets. All of us don't want to look like hookers. There is another generation that God is drawing up and they're going to fight the good fight of faith. Well, you don't understand, prophetess, we're living in a new day. It ain't like it used to be. So you gotta, you gotta work this thing different than you used to. So then what are you asking me to do? I wanna ask you, what are you asking for me to do? Are you saying to me that I am supposed to, after consecrating and praying and laying before God, that I'm supposed to come to church and sit in my seat and watch people get up on the platform and hunk their bodies and slide like the world. And I'm to say nothing, the devil is a liar. Honey, wait a minute. I didn't live saved. Let me tell y'all something. When I was little and I was growing up, my mother them didn't let us do a lot of stuff. We couldn't wear pants. We couldn't wear hot pants. We couldn't wear makeup. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? And are you saying to me, mama, that out of all them years, that I couldn't do all this stuff, that I end up here, and all I get out the deal is a choir and a praise and worship team? I don't think so. Are you saying to me that I gave up the world to come into church, and all I get is entertainment? I gave up the world. Gave up the world to come in here to the world where I 
preachers are wearing earrings? Oh, y'all see, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna say yes, I'm on TV. Our preachers are wearing earrings? And it's supposed to be a macho thing? No, it's a homosexual thing. Oh, I'm gonna get somebody. church and they people practice witchcraft on them. If you say that, I ain't gonna pay my tithes. If you say that, I'm leaving this church. If you preach on that, I'm not coming back. But the Holy Ghost said to me, he's about to clear out who ain't he is anyway. You better get yourself together. He said everybody that's coming to church is not God. Oh, The world. Watch this. That snuck in to the point that the believers are living lives. Seventy percent of us in this place today are professionally schizophrenic. Because you live one life in church, one life on your job, another life in your home, and the Holy Ghost said it's time to bring all of your personalities together so God can get you free. He said it's only one way. See, I understand what I'm trying to say here. Sit down. I'm, I'm, I'm almost finished.
sit down. He said, clean it out. He said, go home and clean it out. He said, go home and clean it out. Get them dirty magazines and clean it out. Get them hoochie mama clothes and clean it out. Get them bull dagger clothes and clean it out. Get them homosexual necklaces and all of them earrings and clean it out. And be a man for God. Y'all sit down. Because I'm going to tell you something. RuPaul is not going to dress me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said RuPaul is not going to dress me. Whitney Houston is not going to dress me. Tony Braxton is not going to dress me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? These are not our role models. What's the matter with y'all? What's the matter? Where's the righteous? I said, where is the righteous? Where's the believer? Don't tell me what you believe. I can look at you and tell who raising you. Television is raising you. Vogue magazine is raising you. We can't look like the world. I, I don't know what Bible you read, but this one told me to come out from among them. and be ye separated. See, I don't know what's wrong with the church now. Pastor Bishop, I don't know what's wrong with him. Now, it's all right to listen to Luther. Yeah, Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Now, it's all right to listen to Mary J. Blige, now it's all right to listen to CD 101.9 jazz. Well, where's your spirit trying to go? I just want to hear what God is saying. Where does that kind of music lead your spirit? And then that's the reason why when it's time to have church, the praise team got to sing for an hour to sing you about all that mess and sing you about all that junk when the Bible said it's time to be holy for an hour. You can't switch that fast. Hey. Sit down, I'm almost through. Y'all mad now. Y'all mad now. You can't switch that fast. You cannot talk in tongues. One minute. And then the very next minute. Say my name, say my name. I ain't, I ain't scared of y'all. I am not scared of y'all. I ain't scared of nobody in here. I'm gonna say it. And if you're a pastor, the Holy Ghost said you better stop preaching the gospel. He said this is a generation that will not endure sound doctrine. Your belly can't handle a real word from the Lord. That's why everybody has slid to the, he gonna bless your message. You want some money? Tap your neighbor. Let's shout. Cause the blessing is coming. So what are you gonna bless you with money for? So you can be a bigger thief? So you can be a bigger hypocrite? Y'all don't like this tonight. Y'all don't like this tonight. So you can compromise. I thought you left the world. I thought when we got saved, Pastor, they told us that we had to give up the world. And I don't know what's going on. They told me that you had to walk circumspect. Back then, as the power of God was so strong on the elders, you, you 
boy didn't think about fornicating and then putting your robe on. You wouldn't even think about playing the lottery and then singing on the praise team. Honey, when you walked in church, you were scared to death. And now I'm so sick and tired of seeing all these programmed mammy pamsy salvations where you say two words and they bring you to the altar and give you a little track. Honey, when I got saved, the mothers laid hands on me and they began to cast the devil off. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want to know where in the power of God, where is it? Where is it? I don't find it. I don't see it. Where is the power? We can't. We can't just blow on people anymore and think they delivered. We can't just put a little oil and say that's it. We can't preach and our cute clothes no more. Hand on the bush. God, start talking to me. We can't keep on our cute necklaces and our beautiful earrings. When it's time for souls to get saved, we ain't soul conscious. We waiting for our next connection. We waiting for who you gonna introduce me to next so I can get in that door, so I can be the next one. So I can be on TV. Honey, the form of God can get you anywhere you want to go. The form of God can get you on TV. The form of God can get you on the radio. The form of God can get you in the back room. But the power of God is what keeps you there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you ain't got no power, you're not going to stay there anyway. He said everything that we get, we should get it through prayer. And supplication. And if you did not get it through prayer and supplication, you are. He said to me today, he said, I didn't tell them to put it on the cart. He said, you go in there tonight and you tell my preachers and you tell national television, you better go back and ask God how to do this thing. Because see, wait, wait, wait. You trying to grow your church on a new cart, on a rocking oxen, when some of the people that we don't like is the people that's got the power. Y'all ain't gonna, y'all ain't gonna say nothing on that. Pastor, they don't wanna hear that. Some of the, some of the, some of the people that we don't care for are people that are anointed. So what we do is we keep inviting our same old friends. We keep being around some of you pastors in here. The Lord said, I'm getting ready to do something in your ministry and it's time for you to get somebody else. Uh Uh-huh, because see the anointing bit off your partners. Your best friends ain't got it no more. But then the same old buddies you invite every year when God wanna do a fresh thing, he wanna do something else. He wanna break up the politics that is in the church. He wanna get rid of the mafia. He wanna get rid of the Godfather. Y'all ain't gonna let me preach it. He want to get rid of the gangsters that are in the gates that are putting hits out on people's lives and their ministries. The devil is a liar. Is that how we do it? You don't like him? Well, let me tell you about him. Now, if I was you, I wouldn't have would. Because let me tell you what I heard about him over there across town. If I was you, I wouldn't have it. And here you are on your face before God. Got a powerful word in your mouth. But the mafia of ministry done got you hit. The good fellas done put a bullet in your head. But God said, I'm raising up a nation. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He said, I got a brand new people that y'all don't know nothing about. He said, I got some preachers that's on the back side of the desert. I got some evangelists that's on the back side of the desert. I got some singers that you ain't never heard of. I got some preachers that you ain't never heard of. And I'm about to take this thing over. I'm about to upset the kingdom. He said, I don't need you. I got somebody else on the bench. They're waiting to take your place. (laughs) 
Let me say this to you. See, when you're playing in the major leagues, coming down the court, it's team ball. But you gotta always remember, God got some people that are benched, that could out preach you, that could out sing you, that can out pastor you. Are you hear what I'm saying? He said, if you're going with me, you better stop tonight and ask the Holy Ghost, how should I carry this thing? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Am I carrying it right? Do I have enough prayer with it? Am I purified? God, show me what you want me to take off. Show me how many hours you want me to pray. I can't go another fat unless you show me how you want me to carry this thing. Because I believe I'm anointed. But you got to show me. You got to show me how, how, to, how to handle it. Because he said, touch not my anointed. And I was in prayer the other morning, and I closed with this, and I saw caskets, and I saw caskets, and I said, God, I said, what are you doing? He said, let me tell you something. I got a people that are trapped with a bunch of pharaohs, and I got to get them out. He said, Peter and John, he Start preaching a gospel to the rulers and the leaders of the temple. And they thought they had a monopoly of what God was doing. Until, watch this, not in the temple, but outside the church. They saw a man. And the man got healed. Not in the church. See, see, that's why, that's why you got some people that I see y'all all over this place that's just half crazy for God. And you hollering and screaming and people will know, well, why don't she sit down? Well, why don't he shut up? Well, why he so wild? No, baby, because I didn't get healed in the church. <laughs> Honey, what I got, I didn't get it from a personality. I got it from God. And I can't shut up. The Bible said he began to leap and dance and run and jump. That didn't say to me, step one, step two, step three. I got it from somebody that didn't just send me in a corner, Bishop, and said, go read your Bible. I got it from somebody that said, you want the power of God on you? You want it? You want to be healed? Man that's lame from your mother's womb? You want to be set free? Look at me. Fasten your eyes. On me. I am so full of the word to if you look at me, you will get healed. You want you want deliverance? Let a righteous man and a righteous woman come in your presence. They ain't gotta say a word. The Bible said that his shadow. He said all he did was, was just, just, see so we play each other down because a lot of y'all looking at me tonight and ain't not my prophet is about but somebody see God. And he said, he said, if you can just get close enough, he said, the very presence of the Lord that is on that person just causes something to happen in your spirit and you don't even, they don't even have to lay hands on you. Just the fact that they just walk by you and God forbid if they ever decide just to lay hands on you and then God, God forbid if they ever just reach out and go to touch you. God, you know, God forbid that the power of God begin to get on them. The God forbid, he said, he said, y'all don't want this, y'all don't want this, y'all don't want this, you don't want this. You don't want it. Do you, how bad do you want it? How, 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 how bad? How bad do you want it? How bad? How bad? How bad do you want it? How bad? How bad? How bad? He said, you ought to be able to just look.
He said, he said, he said, Pastor, Pastor Woods, get ready. Gary Oliver, get ready. Brother Donnie, get ready. Brother Donnie, go in that aisle. Go in the closest aisle. He said, because something is getting ready to happen in this place. Y'all talk about want it? No, you don't want it. You can't want it. You too busy being cute to want it. You don't want to mess your suit up. Oh, uh, come on here, somebody. You don't want to break your Rolex. Hey! You don't want to lose your diamond earring. Come on here, church. Is there anybody that wants it? See, that's why, that's why in this last hour, you can't say, Pastor Parsley, look on me, and my hair is green, and I got two earrings in each nose, and a bull earring in this nose, and my eyebrow is pierced. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And my arms and my legs are tattooed, and I got a skirt on up to here. You can't look on me and find he said, we ought to be able to get so far back in Christ until when they look at us, they don't see us. They see the power of God. Are y'all hearing what God is saying? And the Holy Ghost in this place tonight, he began to tell me, oh yeah, he said to me, he said, it ain't gonna be easy tonight. He said, because you're getting ready to start preaching pure holiness. He said, when you start talking about holiness, it's gonna get quiet. And you know what's gonna happen? Only those that are mine are coming out. Wait a minute. If you mad, you ain't his. If you can't receive this, then you ain't his. If you can't digest this, then you ain't his. Oh, I didn't come here to tell you no Bible story. this because you have to understand the giftings and the workings of a prophet here we go well I don't see why why I got to do that well what difference does it make well see I understand so you know what the Holy Ghost said he said well it's time to go to your next level do you know why I came in here I came to go to my next level he said he said when it's time to go to see that's why your warfare is so hard pastor parsley because you're still holding up that standard of righteousness and they call us old-fashioned uh-huh that's what y'all call me she's so old-fashioned she's so way back there honey they ain't even doing that no more tired all that stuff that she talking about but i tell you what you may not like me and you may think i'm old-fashioned but you know what i got and I'm going to tell you how I got it. I got it by dying out to God. I got it by sacrificing. I got it by letting God kill me. I got it by letting God strip me. I got it because I wanted it more than I wanted purple hair and a earring in my nose and a mini skirt and a split and James Brown and Luther Vandross and Whitney Houston. I wanted it back. What did you give up? Since you got saved, you look the same, you walk the same, you talk the same, same body gestures, same friends, same records, same CDs. What did you get saved from? righteous 
You ain't righteous. You a hypocrite. You a liar. And you a thief. You in here, watch this. You feel this presence in here? This is what we say. Watch this. Watch. It's the anointing. And every time I go to church, I feel the anointing. Well, you know what? One day, Bishop, I went to the car dealership to buy a car. And it was an expensive car. It was a Mercedes. And the man said, get in the car, ride around. Got in the car, rolled around. He said, you like this car? I said, yeah. Do you like the way it handle? I said, yes. He said, you want this car? I said, yes. He said, let's go back to the dealership. Went back to the dealership. I love the car. I love the way it feels. I love the way it drove. I love the way it handled. But when I got back to the dealership, he said, give me the keys. Because until you pay for it, you can't take it home. See, a lot, of, a lot of us today, we came in here to steal the anointing that's in the building. But the reason why when you get back to your house and hell is still there, because you ain't paid the price to take that anointing home. He said, if you want the power, what are you willing to pay for it? Say it! Say it! Say it! What are you willing to pay for it? Time to pay up. Stop speaking in tongues if you ain't gonna pay up. Stop jumping and shouting and you ain't gonna pay up. You thief, you. You didn't pay for that shout. You didn't pay for them tongues. You didn't pay for that praise. You stole it. I hear a little song. I hear a little song. Get right with God. And do it now. Get right with God. He will show you how. Down at the cross. Where he shed his blood. You better get right with God. Get right. Get right with God. See, so you know why? You know we can't receive that? You know what we can't see that? Because it ain't. Yeah, funky, funky, hey, yeah, funky, funky. Hey. As soon as you start singing an old praise that God done gave an old church mother while she was on a 50 day fast, you can't hardly receive that because your spirit is far away from God. Say it! Say it! Say it! Get right with God and do it now. Get right with God. He will show you how. Down at the cross. Where he shed his blood. Get right with God. Get right. Get right with God. Breathe. Hold me. Let it breathe. You know what? I hear the church coming up out of here. I hear God's church coming. Let it breathe. Hold me. Let it breathe. Hold me. Let the breath. Hold the Lord. Yes! Well, I think I hear the church coming. Yeah! 
now wait a minute you don't know what's getting ready to happen in here because you can't sing that song and the power of God don't step in your belly the seconds the Holy Ghost said this place is getting ready to turn into a big car wash I know y'all came to camp meeting for one thing but is there anybody here want to be washed tonight is there anybody here that want to be washed tonight washed see what's gonna happen is some of y'all pastors is going back with another charge see we said we want revival in our churches but do you know how 5,000 was converted persecution when Peter and John start preaching holiness when the persecution hit them for what they were preaching then God added to the church here we talk about well I ain't gonna say that because so you don't want to hurt people you don't want to hurt they feel it what you want to do just let them just come on and you know what the Bible said the Bible let us know we can come as we are but baby, you can't stay as you are. Honey, you've been here five years now. And you still wearing a mini skirt? You've been here five years now? Y'all ain't saying nothing here. You mean to tell me you've been in church seven years and we still don't see no change? There ought to be something about your outer appearance that can testify says anything about you that's testifying tonight. Is there anybody? Touch your neighbor and ask him that. Tell him to come to the next person. Turn around and ask somebody else. Is there anything about you that's testifying tonight? Something getting ready to happen in here. Just turn around and grab one person and tell him I'm getting ready to give God a real yes. Oh, come on, tell him to grab somebody and say, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, I may fall on you. I may start running. But I'm getting ready to give God a real yes. Everybody in here, start telling God yes. Start telling God yes. Turn around and 
and face that way. Turn around and face that way. Pastor, can you turn around and face this way in that center aisle? Bishop, can you turn around and face that way in that center aisle over there? Right here in the striped suit. Pastor Woods, can you come over here? Matter of fact, y'all can't see him. Y'all come up here. Come stand on that first ledge. Bishop, come stand on that first ledge. Pastor, stand, stand on this first ledge over here. Down there, stand right there. And God said, this is a corporate power. And something getting ready to hit this building. He said, when these men of God stretch their hands out over in your section, under the bush, he said, I'm going to break demon spirits. I'm going to hold my shoulder over this. He said, the enemy's tactic is going to be broken. He said, the power of God can really hit this place. And this is how I want you to do it. I want you to make up your mind right now that you ain't going to stop telling God yes until you feel fire in your belly. You ain't going to let your neighbor stop you. You ain't going to let your earring stop you. You ain't going to let your outfit stop you. You ain't going to let your head stop you. Ain't nothing going to stop you. Now, if you don't want this, you sit down. But God said, I promise you, when they stretch their hands up, he said, fire, like it was in the upper room, is going to sit on top of every last one of us. And whether or not that fire get in your belly, it's going to be whether or not you tell God yes. All back there in them bleachers, some of y'all may fall out of the power of God. He said, but begin to holler as loud as you can until you feel God turn over in your belly. Come on, one. A wave is coming. A wave is coming in television. Right there in your living room. Right there in your... Two. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Grab one neighbor. Grab one neighbor. You don't know what's getting ready to happen across this country when we say this. Grab one neighbor and as loud as you can. You don't know what's getting ready to happen to America, to churches across this nation. You don't know what's getting ready to happen to gospel singers everywhere, to pastors everywhere, to preachers everywhere, to evangelists everywhere, to praise and worship leaders, to choir members. Grab a neighbor and look at them in their face. And if you don't mean it, don't say it. Say neighbor!
to say it like God has given it to me. Turn around and look at your neighbor. And this right here is showing up the power of God because I feel it. Look at your neighbor. Donnie, and tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I decree it to be so that the foundation of your salvation shall be. saying nothing in your Bible study you better preach holiness in your prayer meeting you better preach holiness are y'all hearing what I'm saying he said holiness without which no man shall see the Lord are you hearing what I'm saying lay your hands on yourself and say self you're gonna be holy oh y'all ain't saying it like you mean it God said it's time to declare war on yourself it's time to get in the battle for yourself. Lay your hands and say it out loud. Say, self. Yeah. You gonna live. You gonna live. Holy. Holy. I gotta go. Some of y'all don't believe this. But you're going to go home and you're going to look in your closet. As for me and my house, we shall serve the true and the living God. Because all over this building, I feel God anointing every last one of us with a look on me ministry. I feel the Holy Ghost changing your countenance by this time Monday morning. When you get back on your job, they gonna look at your countenance and say, what happened to you? But you better tell them I found out that I may be in this world, but I'm not of this world, for I am the righteous. I am the redeemed. Are you ashamed? For the Bible said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
but it is the power of God unto salvation. I don't know if you've noticed, but let me just let you in on the secret. Everybody is going back to church. I don't know if y'all noticed that or not, but sinners is trying to find their way to church. And the saints is trying to find their way into the world. I don't know if you notice or not, but it's church time. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's old time church time. I don't mean just Tuesday night Bible study and Sunday morning church. I mean Tuesday night Bible study, Wednesday night prayer meeting, Thursday night consecration service, Friday night deliverance service, Saturday afternoon noonday church, Sunday morning early morning prayer, Sunday afternoon the first service, Sunday night the second service, Monday night is a prayer meeting, Tuesday night is Bible study. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You better get used to it, baby. Your job is to go to church. Your assignment is to go to church. I don't know if you know this or not, but you are a church person. You are not Whitney Houston. You are not. You are not Tony Braxton. You are not a part-time saint. You are a full-time righteous person. Your life is church. Your assignment is church. You live to go to church. When you get home, you pulling out church clothes for the next church service. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. What do you mean we in church too long? You know why we in church longer than anybody else? Because we gonna have more than anybody else. Are you hearing what God is saying? Church has got to be your everything. You gotta breathe God. You gotta sleep God. You gotta wake up in the middle of the night, stumbling your way to the bathroom, saying, Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. You gotta be brushing your teeth, saying, Oh, no, 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 you gotta be putting your clothes on. Tell my head. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. You gotta get in the traffic and say, Hallelujah. God, I give you the praise. You gotta look over at the neighbor and give him a smile because the Holy Ghost is in your car. You gotta get on your job, skipping around the office. And every now and then, you gotta take a praise break to the bathroom and get inside of a stall and shandala maka satala mahaya and steal you a shelter because church is your livelihood. Church is your way out. Church is your life. Say it! I gotta go. I gotta quit. I see a blaze. I see a blaze. Do you know what the top of a candle look like? You. Lift your hands up. You know, you know, pastor right here. You know what the top of a candle looks like? I see a thing standing in your pulpit right now. And it's about eight feet tall and it's shaped like the flame of a top of a candle. This is your pulpit. And I see that tall flame. It's about eight feet tall and it's rocking like this, like somebody's blown it. It's moving like that. And the Holy Ghost said, it is a flame that he has been holding back, that he has wanted to break out in that city. And the Holy Ghost said, when you get back home and you step in your pulpit, you're going to step in this He said, a revival that you're going to run is going to ignite your people. I see a big crusade. I see a fire starting with you. The Holy Ghost said, the flame is waiting for you. It's waiting for you when you get back home. 
is already standing in your pulpit. He said, you don't have to fast for this one. You don't have to pray for this one. He said, it was predestined. It was in my will for you when you were in your mother's womb. He said, your season have come for the fire. He said, your season have come for the flame. And he said, my son, be not afraid of it. He said, for heal on the Lord Shia, for sick bodies shall be healed. And that healing anointing that's been suppressed on the inside of you, it shall come forth. And you shall prophesy like you've never prophesied before. And your people shall look at you and say, what has happened to pastor? And I hear you screaming, get out of my way! Because the fire is here. If you don't want the fire, get out of my way. Somebody begin to shout for this man of God. I said help him shout. Wait a minute. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes. Pastors, raise your hands. Evangelists, raise your hands. Yes, God. You done started something in here. He said right now, if you a pastor, you're an evangelist. This ain't no joke. I see this for real. He said, you talking about fire from camp meeting? I double dare any pastor in this place tonight, any evangelist, I double dare you to jump out in that aisle. Because when you get out there, watch this. I see all these torches standing all over this place. He said, jump in one. If you a pastor, jump in one. Oh, by shut up. Let's jump in one. Come on. Somebody begin to help them praise God. This is it. Now watch this. I know my grade. And I don't have the authority to do this. But Pastor Parsley. He said, this is it. This is it. This is getting ready to start something. Some of y'all don't understand what's getting ready to happen. He said, every pastor in this place. He said, I want you to come. And I want you to start dancing like David in front of Pastor Parsley. He said, because the power of God that's on this man's life. God said he's going to unlock the thing that's been holding y'all ministries back. He's gonna unlock the finances. If you ain't shame and too full of pride to come and just start dancing in front of this man. He said, come on here church. He unlocking your destiny.
not be the same. Let me get down here. We're going to do this one more time. Because my ministry will not be the same. Pastor God said, wave on us one more time. And if I was y'all, I'd get in the praise. Because you may not see what's happening. But God is making the devil take his hands off of your ministry. God is making the devil take his hands off of your ministry. Come on, Pastor, where are you going? It's over. What the devil thought he was going to stop in your churches, he has been silenced by the Holy Ghost. When that man began to wave his hands, are y'all ready for this out there? I saw the Holy Ghost give an everlasting one of us dominion power. Wait, y'all ain't praising God like y'all believe that. Said when he began to wave his hands, the Holy Ghost said, Tonight I'm giving every last one of y'all, including me, dominion power. Dominion both now and for The Holy Ghost told me 10 days ago, I am going to birth the preachers of deliverance. But God, the Holy Ghost said, they cannot be deliverers until they are delivered. You got to leave something at this altar. Oh God. You've been trying to deliver in the arm of the flesh with your plans and your programs. And God the Holy Ghost said, you've been like Moses. You delivering people one at a time. And like Moses, when he delivered one Israelite, he killed an Egyptian. 
your ability to give life to the world has turned because of your leaning on the arm of the flesh till you are literally aborting the lives that God wants you to deliver. You got to get it out. So I'll tell you how I felt. I felt like John the Baptist. That's how I felt. Said, God, give me somebody that'll preach this with me. Give me somebody with a national voice that'll preach this with me. Give me somebody that'll stand up and preach holiness. Holiness. Oh, God. You can't preach holiness when you're not holy. Get this damnable divorce spirit out of your life. Get it out. Put alcohol away from you. Put it away from you. What will you give up for a greater anointing? Turn your TV set off. Get your nose out of HBO. Get in an altar. Quit getting your messages from somebody else's tape series. Get your prayer life back. Hang up the damnable telephone and shut up your gossip. I told you we Wednesday night we developed a personality cult, not a Pentecostal church. We're not entertainers. Give us some preachers that'll put a Bible in one hand and a microphone in the other and care less if the 50 people they've got, 45 of them run off. Everything you compromise to keep, you will lose. Lay your hands on your belly. Say, I receive no spirit, but the Holy Spirit. It is a Holy Spirit. It is a Holy Spirit. The children that live in my home will not look like the world, will not act like the world. I have the right to raise up a righteous seed because I determine I will be holy. Holiness unto the Lord now and forever. Now shout. Wait a minute. God wants every one of you to give something up. Oh, you're not hearing me. God wants every one of you to give something up. I de- he's telling you what it is right now. I said he's telling you. Now, oh, no, no, no. I'm not talking about for a week or two. I'm talking about you ain't ever going to pick it up again. S- Samson's power was a direct result of his Nazarite vows. Brother Summerall taught me 25 years ago, make a vow to God that nobody else knows anything about and keep it. Don't tell nobody, it's too holy. There are some things that other preachers can do that I cannot do. There are things that you must give up for no other reason than he put his hand on it. And if you're not willing, you're a bastard to the anointing to begin with. Oh, this is it. 
I've waited 20 years for this night. You youth pastors, quit letting your teenagers run around with spiked hair and pierced eyebrows, jabbing holes in their tongue. Christians, so-called Christian leaders, run around telling people to put tattoos on their arm. Can't you read? Your Bible says, put no cutting no mark in your flesh. And somebody said, well, that's the old covenant. Well, that's the old covenant. Honey, you don't even have old covenant power. Much less walk down the road, let your shadow touch folk. You want some power? You, want, you know why God's absolutely powerful? Do you know why there's nothing God can't do? Because he's absolutely holy. He derives his power from his consecratedness. Lay your hands on your belly. Say, I'm giving it up. Not because I have to. Because I want to. Less of me means more of him. Less of me means more of him. Less of me means more of him. Now tell him you give it up. Tell him, tell him, tell him you leave it at this altar. Tell him you leave it at this altar and you'll never pick it up again. Tell him you leave it at this altar and you'll never touch it again. Somebody cry out to the Lord. Cry out, cry out. Somebody cry out. Cry out! He's putting a new mantle on you! You're gonna be a preacher of righteousness! Hey, 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 hey! Shirabaha! No, it was right here. It was right here. Turn her around this way. Turn her around this way. That's where Brother Summerall handed me the sword. I give to you of that anointing because you'll guard it with holiness and righteousness. Pow. Pow. Shh, shh, shh. It's a holy thing. Oh, that's a holy thing. Lift your hands. That's a holy thing. It's not all about a shout and a jump and a dance. It's, I want God to so come in your life, you can't pick yourself up off the floor for his presence. I want him to come on you in such the power of holiness that you tremble to breathe. There. 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 You're going to be persecuted, so I anoint you now to stand. You're going to be laughed at in the meetings you used to get. You're not going to get anymore. And so I speak strength into you. Some of you have been so concerned that somebody like you and somebody have you and you get to be a part of a group. God doesn't want you to be a part of a group. He's calling you to a wilderness ministry. If you have to have 900 friends, go get in a Amway group. Give us some preachers, Lord. Give it up, 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 give it up. Give it up, 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 give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Some of you are going to have to turn it off. Some of you are going to have to go home and give the car you love away. 
Some of you are going to have to put your golf clubs up. What will you give him? What will you give him? Purge us, Lord. Purge us, purge us. Purge us, purge us. Purge us, purge us. If you're afraid somebody's going to leave your church, you better just get out now. You better just get out now. This is not user friendly. God's calling for a real church. A real church. God's going to tell some of you to stop having 15 services a day for no other reason than you want to appeal to a certain segment of the crowd. It's, it's the world's way. Convenience is always the world's way. It's never God's way. Lift your hands and let him anoint you. Let him anoint you. No, no, out of a pure spirit, bless him. Out of a pure spirit, bless him. You have a cluttered heart. There's too much in your heart. You let too much in the eye gate, too much in the ear gate. There's too much in there. Sift through it. Sift through it, Lord. Sift through it. We'll give you anything, but show us, show us. Just put your hand on it. Just put your hand on it and it's gone. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want every preacher who will put themselves before the Lord in the next month to preach holiness, sanctification, and separation. Raise your hand. Anoint them to do it, Lord. Anoint them to do it. Anoint them. Give us, give us a holy church because a holy church is a powerful church. Give it to us. Give it to us. Give it to us. Put your hands down. Stop. No, 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 no. Stop. Stop. You play. Stop singing. Play. You... You must stop preaching messages that turn them on. You're playing to their flesh. And the reason you do is because their clapping and their shouting makes you feel so good. You're addicted to the crowd. Preach and leave them weeping in the altars and walk out the building. You're intoxicated with the crowd. I keep hearing the same thing. 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 I keep hearing it. 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 I keep hearing it over and over. I keep hearing it over and over. And God said, it's because there's nothing that is closer to your heart. Every person, when I say it, the Holy Ghost is going to leap up in the inside of you. Don't think about it. Just do it. He wants a thousand dollars now. He wants a thousand dollars now. Now. He wants it now. Lift your hand. He wants it now. He wants it now. He wants it now. It's not going to me. He wants it now. He wants it now. Will you do it? Will you do it? He wants it now. 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 He wants go get it. 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 If you're not going to get it, stand right where you are because he's going to speak to you. He wants something. 
He wants something. He wants something. You bless a prophet. Joni, Joni, stand up on that chair. Stand up on that chair. Stand up on that chair. This is my wife. This is my wife. She's my covenant partner. No, come here to me. This is my wife, my only wife, now and forever. Well, you don't know, Brother Rod, she might get tired of the gospel and just leave. No. No, she won't. No, I'm the authority in her life. She ain't going nowhere. Tell these people, is it true or not true that 90% of what this woman said tonight I said to you in the car three days ago. And not only three days ago, but also on the way home, I was just telling Darlene. We just had a whole conversation about it. Tell them. Tell them. Today, about three days ago, about everything she preached tonight, I said it was freaky when, he, when, when she was preaching. I said it was, she must have been in our car. I say it every time she comes. She's been in my car. No, 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 no. Don't, it's not a light thing. That's a prophetic gift. And the thing that the Holy Spirit kept saying to me is this. Correction and reproof are no challenge to the righteous. We don't hate her for it. We love her for it. We love her for it. We love her for it. And I will put, give me that television camera. I will put my back to her face and you try to speak against her. You speak against me and every anointing in my genealogy and I rebuke you in the name of God's Christ. Now this Bible says you bless a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. Are you getting an offering? Because he wants it. Go back and get one. Go back and get one. He wants it. He wants it. He wants it. He wants it. If you've got it and you're already up here, just throw it on the altar. Just throw it on the altar. Would everybody say altar? altar. That's a good thing to get back in your church. That's what these are. These are altars. This is a place where I can get on one side and weeping people can get on the other side. This is where the needs of God's people are met. Get back in the altars. Get back in the altars. You don't have to bring your offering down here, but if you're bringing it, that's fine. If you've already got it and you're putting it down now, that's fine. Otherwise, otherwise, get something. He wants something from you. He wants something from you. This is not about an offering. This is God is putting his hand on something. Let him have it. Let him have it. Let him have it. Joni, make out, a, make out, a, make out an envelope for $5,000. $5,000. God wants it. God wants it. $5,000. Make it out. Make it out. And get it on this altar. 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 Some of you are saying, well, I, I don't know if I can give that from my church or not. Well, you could if you'd give up a little of your salary. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Now, don't, don't start bringing your offering down because these folks are trying to get to their seat. Don't start bringing your offering down. Just stay right where you are. The ushers are coming. The ushers are coming. If you're using a check, all you need is a WHC on it. Forget about an offering envelope. What do you need an envelope? What do you need credit for what you give to God for anyway? I mean, if you want it there in the pews, help yourself. Come here, Keith. Come here. Come here. You're my son. My son. And I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. With my blessing, I bless you. It's my blessing. I bless you. It's a holy thing. Don't act like, oh boy, praise the Lord. Oh, no, no, no. Some of you ought to be doubled over. Some of you ought to be saying, I don't want to do this. Do it anyway. Brother Lawrence Bishop, you're one of the finest men of God I know. Come here. 
You're one of the finest men I know. You're a man of honor and integrity. And I love you for it. I love you for it. There aren't many like you. Thank you. Can I just lay my hands on you? Touch you. Let the power of God come on. Would you get out an offering? Don't anybody move. This is a holy moment. Don't anybody move. Prophet of God laying out under the power of God. She understands transference. She understands there's something going into her that she can't get any other way. It's pouring in her. It's like, it's like up here I see just a, just a, a pitcher just pouring oil, pouring oil into her belly. It's going into her belly, Ma. Mother, it's going into her belly. Can you sense it? It's going into her belly. Oil. She's been so hurt. She's been so hurt, and she refused to quit. They laughed at her and lied about her and talked about her, and she refused to quit. She won't be able to live if she ever stops preaching it. Did you hear me? Mother, did you hear me? She won't ever be able to live if she stops preaching it. Do you have that gift ready? Do you have it? Something he wants. Something he wants. Do you have it? Let him come. Here now. Let him come. Let him come. Come. If you preachers want to come and bring it, come and bring it. No, wait, no, wait, no, wait. There's a supernatural $25,000. There it is. It's right there. I don't know how it's coming. Seems like it has something to do with insurance. Hallelujah. If you're a preacher and you've got it ready and you want to bring it, go on. Go on. I'm not going to stop you. It's a holy thing. It's a holy thing. It's a holy thing. Does everybody have something in their hand? Does everybody have something in their hand? Does everybody have a gift in their hand? Let's honor the Lord. Let's honor the Lord. Let's honor the Lord. If you're not already in the aisle, don't get in the aisle. If you're not already in the aisle, don't get in the aisle. I'm sorry, honey. But there's a day coming when we're going to live in such a way that it will be impossible for you to stay in this chair. I believe that with all my heart. I believe it. You know it, don't you? She's a great preacher of the gospel. God's going to loose her from that chair too when we get right. When we get right, he will. He will. He really will. Praise the Lord. If you're not already in the aisle, don't get in the aisle. If you can't listen to the simplest of instructions, how will you hear his voice? Would you just say holiness? See, I'm so tired. Do you wanna, do you wanna know the real legalism? The real legalism is a church that says, if you can't show me in black and white in a verse of scripture, then I'm not gonna do it because you're trying to put me in bondage. Whatever happened to folks that just wanted to do something? Whatever happened to folks that just loved God so much they couldn't stand it? Whatever happened to somebody that loved God so much that they said, if anything's even close to the world, I don't want anything to do with it. Just don't want anything to do with it. The problem is we're in love with the world and not in love with Him. But we're getting in love with Him. I said we're falling in love with Him. We're falling in love with that anointing. Gentlemen, Ushers, do you have the containers? Begin to pass them. I want to hear that song, Let Your Anointing. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear, Let Your Anointing. That's what I want to hear. Would you just pray in the Holy Ghost? Go ahead, gentlemen. Go ahead. Stop looking around at somebody else when I tell you to go ahead. When I say go ahead, I mean go ahead. Go ahead. Come 
Come here, Brian. You're supposed to be in the work of the Lord and stop letting people tell you otherwise. Let your anointing. Come here, Ronnie. Come here. Come here. Come here. Shade. Take it. All the hurt just balled up to force you. Well, let your anointing. Let your anointing. I've called you. I've put my hand on you. Don't pattern yourself after anybody. Seek my face. I'll bring you into a dimension that others have, have made great striving for and never attained if you'll let me be your passion. The anointing of God. Come on, you. Now you can sing. Now you can sing. Don't you love him? Don't you love such a holy God? Praise God. Hallelujah. Stop being so pretty. Half of, half of you, the people can't hear the message you're saying for looking at the clothes you got on. Just stop it. Just stop. Be a simple person. Be a simple person. Be a person of purity and holiness and love God with your whole heart. And quit trying to run the church like some kind of businessman. Just preach holiness and preach righteousness. Because the fact of the matter is, did you stop singing a minute? Did you see that she preached righteousness and holiness and people shouted the house down? I think they shouted harder than they do all these little nice little sugary sweet messages. Oh, bless your heart, you're so pushed down, but praise the Lord, the Lord's going to lift you up and just live any way you want and it's okay because God loves you. And everybody shouts and runs. But did you see tonight, I'll tell you, I've been greatly encouraged tonight. I believe God really does have a church. <laughs> I believe he does. Donnie, I believe he's really got a church. And there's nothing wrong with the old time way. Huh? Finally, finally. 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 Ushers, have you finished? What a wonderful way to end Dominion Camp Meeting. Just in the perfect peace of God. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. We need power, don't we? In our crusade in Chicago, or in Louisville, this precious woman sitting right back here, scars all over her belly and arms, where she sliced herself with razor blades and have to get sewn up at the emergency rooms. And God just gloriously set her free, just She's been free for about 45 days now. Do you have any desire to cut yourself, honey? No. You sure look great. You look like a Christian. You do. You look like a Christian. I'm just talking, you know. Let me tell you, let me tell you what we need some more of. We need some more mothers. some mothers to teach these younger women that they don't have to look like harlots. They don't have to. That the glory of the Lord can be upon them like a gar I'm not. They don't have to look like they fell off a covered wagon, but we've gone so far the other way, it's ridiculous. Yeah, bless you. We need some mothers. Like this one right here. I got a pretty good one myself. I need some mothers. Some of you mothers, you, you get around these, these 
My past, my, my sweet, precious pastor, Mabel Whipple, she just ministered to me in the Holy Ghost up here a while ago. She ministered to me in the Holy Ghost. She didn't know anything about it. She said, the Holy Ghost shows me that you've been smitten in your knees. Well, she doesn't know that they have to wrap me up for about a half hour before I can stand up to preach. But I feel great now. I do. I feel wonderful now. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go back to church. Now, I don't, I don't imagine that any of you are going to miss Sunday morning or midweek or Sunday night service. You know, she is preaching that. And, I, and this is the honest truth. There, there are people in this church I pay $100,000 a year and can't get them to come to Wednesday night service. They're hirelings. Can't get them to. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. We ought to have a passion to go to church. A passion. We've spent too much time with little league ball games and not enough time in prayer meeting. Well, I have to quit now. I have to just stop now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, what a week it's been. What a week it's been. Can we just love the Lord a minute? I know you want this, this videotape and audio tape. They can get those, can't they, Sheila? Am I supposed to tell them something? If you've already ordered audio tapes, you can pick them up in the cafeteria. Hallelujah. I'm just going to stay in here a while and love on Jesus. You all can do whatever you want to do. You can be dismissed if you want to, or you can just hang out and love on Jesus a while if you want to. Somebody help me love on Jesus a while.